On a cold December morning in 1986, my husband and I awoke to realize that I was in labor for our first child. And we were excited and we were ready. We had spent months preparing for this moment. We had taken Lamaze classes and we had diligently practiced our breathing and our coaching. I had told our doctor that I didn't want any drugs. I wanted a natural childbirth. No drugs, no epidural. Just me, my God, my coach, and my breathing. And I was set. By the time we got to the hospital and got far enough into this experience for me to realize that I'm an idiot and that I did indeed want drugs and an epidural, it was too late. And I was scared. And I decided, I'm not doing this. I want out. My husband, bless his heart, kept up his end of the deal and kept coaching and kept trying to get me to breathe, despite the fact that I was telling him at every given moment exactly what he could do with his breathing and where he could put his breathing, and that he was sleeping on the couch for the rest of his life, he persisted. And he was able to get me to focus, and he was able to get me to breathe, and he was able to get me through the process. And I was reminded of that this week as I thought about breathing and breath. Because our Old Testament lesson that was assigned for today is from Ezekiel, and it's the Valley of the Dry Bones. God whisks Ezekiel away and shows him in a vision this valley floor that is just nothing but covered with skeletons. Skeletons that have been dead so long that they are just bright, white, shiny bones laying in the bright sunlight. And God wants to know if Ezekiel thinks they can live again. And then God does just that. He knits the bones back together. He puts muscles and organs and covers them with flesh. And then Ezekiel sees what looks like a vast army of people, but there's still no life in them. Not until God breathes on them the breath of God. I wasn't going to use this scripture lesson this week at first because a few weeks ago, the last time we met in person was on a Wednesday night and for our Wednesday night Linton gathering. And this was the scripture that we used. And we talked about breath and breathing. But as I kept trying to develop something else this week, God kept bringing me back to this. And I realized that it's probably more prevalent and more needed now than it was even then. The subject that we need to talk about, about our breathing. Our breathing is something we take for granted unless we're having trouble with it. If we overexert ourselves and we become out of breath, we notice our breathing. If we get excited or scared and it takes our breath away, we notice our breathing. If we have a cold or bronchitis or pneumonia and we're having trouble catching our breath or breathing, we notice our breathing. It's not until our breath is in danger of not being there or it's labored that we ever really notice our breathing. We just take it for granted and we ignore it and we go on about our day. But our breathing is extremely important to us. It helps us get through life much the same way that breathing helps a woman get through labor. One of the most powerful images for me in scripture after the resurrection of Jesus Christ is in John when he is standing as the risen Christ with his disciples and he breathes on them. And John tells us he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. So in scripture we have God 
taking this earth creature in Genesis that he has formed out of the dust and the dirt and breathing on him the breath of life. This valley of dry bones that seem far beyond any hope of ever having life again, he breathes on them the breath of life. And then Jesus stands before his disciples and he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. We have the breath of God within us. Our very lives are a living example of the breath of God. And it's no accident that our breathing is important. Yoga and mindful meditation, both have people center themselves and focus on their breathing. There are many ancient prayer techniques that you breathe a prayer, that you center yourself, that you close your eyes and you focus inward. And then you slowly take a deep breath in and you slowly exhale. And you focus on that rhythm of inhaling and exhaling so that it's not just something you're doing or taking for granted but you're focused on those breaths and then you add to those breaths in your mind a scripture verse or a saying a lot of people me included when we practice this particular prayer technique as we breathe in, in our minds, we're saying, Lord Jesus Christ. And as we exhale, we say, have mercy on me. So you're literally breathing this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ have mercy on me. And it becomes a prayer. And you become in tune with your, your own body with your own breathing, with the Christ and the God that resides within you. And you become centered. And it's a wonderful, wonderful gift. And in the days that, lies a, that lie ahead, I'd like us all to become more mindful of our breathing. And to know that God is as close to us as our next breath. He neither leaves us nor forsakes, forsakes us. He is never far from us. Every breath we take is a gift of life. And in these times of stress, uncertainty, and fear, we need to focus on our breathing more than ever to focus on the God who has breathed life into us, continues to sustain us. And when we're looking at situations, whether they be situations in our personal lives and in our individual lives where this current crisis has created financial burdens, because it has and it will continue for a while to create financial burdens, whether it's created shortages of needed goods and necessi necessities in our lives, or when we're grieving the loss of not being, ab being able to be around extended family and friends, or whether we're grieving the corporate losses that we have, not only our freedom to go and do what we want, when we want, where we want, but as we watch the numbers tick up rather quickly here lately of how many people worldwide in the United States and in our own state that have contracted this incredibly horrible disease as we watch the death toll continue to rise, as we continue to fear for our own health and the health and well-being of our loved ones, it's more important than ever to breathe to slow down, to center ourselves, to focus on our breathing, 
and to know that the God who brought life out of a valley of dry bones, the God who breathed life into a lump of dirt and clay, and the Jesus Christ who breathed the Holy Spirit upon his followers, is with us and continues as close as our breath to breathe life into us, to breathe hope into our lives, and that he is as close to us as our breath. Easter is coming, and it's weighing heavy on most of us. Most of us have never spent an Easter that we didn't put on brightly colored new clothes and walk into a church filled with Easter lilies, hyacinths, tulips, and daffodils, smelling their smell seeing the palm branches, hearing the trumpets exalting this risen Lord and Savior, and we know we're not going to have that this year, at least not on Easter Sunday. We will celebrate Easter, and we will celebrate with full-blown, pull-out-the-stops worship service, celebrating Easter and the resurrection on our first Sunday back together again. But it's going to be delayed. And I'm grieving that, and I bet you are too. I'm also grieving the fact that we're probably not going to gather as extended families for the traditional ham or lamb dinners with, with grandkids opening Easter baskets and doing Easter egg hunts and coloring Easter eggs. For safety, we're just not going to be able to do that. And the grief comes in waves. But remember, death doesn't have the last word, and this disease won't have the last word. So as we march forward, I'd like to ask you to focus on your breathing, to slow down, grab a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, a beer, whatever you, whatever is going to help you relax. At the end of a long day, relax, pay attention to your breathing, hear it, feel it, fill your lungs, exhale, fill your lungs, and exhale, and be assured that the God who breathed life into you continues to love you, to sustain you, and is never farther away from you than that breath you just took.